Hey guys, before we begin with our speculations today, let's take a look at a piece of Magic the Gathering artwork. This artwork is Sword of Dungeons and Dragons, original painting for the MTG Hascon promo, Unstable. It's crazy. Magic prices have pretty much gotten out of control and paintings and original artwork it's a unique magic collectible item. So if there was anything that would spike up in price, it would be this because there is only one of them. Now this is from a famous magic artist. And it is a, I wouldn't call it iconic magic card, but if you like Dungeons and Dragons and you like magic, then this card, this original piece of artwork is for you and you will have the only one. I think it's great that the artist can make a second income from this and they get art artist proofs, which are also very good. I like it. I think it's smart. Uh, this is a beautiful painting. I think it's going to go for probably 10000 after it's all done. And all done. So the big winner is Hazret, and this card is seeing play all over the place. You play this, you win. You play this, you can win. Mono Red has dominated Standard right now, which typically happens when you get a new set until the mid-range or control decks have more testing. This card went from bulk Mythic to $16 pretty much overnight. It hit 20 and now it is going down a little bit. Post-rotation, it's still going to be as good as it is right now. The haste and indestructible is quite good. Your red deck, so having less one or less cards in your hand, as long as you don't make the mistake that one guy made where instead of playing out his sorceries, he kept them and then he tried to attack and then he lost the game. It's the worst magic play I've ever seen. Yes, he was very tired. Yes, uh, it was very... It's a mistake everyone could make but the reason it is the worst because it was on the biggest stage and he could have won talking of bulk rares let's talk about this one uh, it is seeing more play from Kaladas. it was 50 cents really oh 60 cents okay and now it is two dollars it's okay i mean it's definitely very good with one of the newer cards from hour of devastation that brings these creatures back and comes with a zombie and now your zombie is going to destroy everything which is great i don't know i think it's interesting like if i had to put money somewhere i would put money into the bulk mythics i don't think that all of them are going to remain bulk for very long and mainly because when you have a red deck meta it means that people are not testing people are not developing uh, people, Red Deck Wins is the deck that comes out of the gate the fastest, but it's not the most dominant deck a few months into the format. Give it a few more months, and then you'll see more Control S, you'll see more Board Wipe. I like this as Board Wipe. I think it's very good. The next card I'm going to show you, I'm going to talk about, is Blue. So I do love my Blue draw cards. This was a fantastic speculation had you made it when it was bulk, a bulk rare for like 25, 50 cents. I don't know that many people who made it though. Uh, on its face, it's not very good, but in this current meta and this current standard, in my opinion, standard is not very strong right now. So something like this is incredibly potent in terms of card selection and recursion and blockability. It's the perfect card for con a control deck into it draws you cards, it discards your cards, it lets you manipulate your hand, it allows you, it gives you a blocker to trade, and then on turn seven, you can kind of dig through time at no cost, because this is from your graveyard, which is fantastic. Again, when you, you get so much value from this card, it's just, it, it reminds me a lot of Fragtust. I know that's a very strange comparison, but Fragtus, no matter what you did with it, it would give you value. You either gain your life, you get the token, or even if they killed it immediately, you have value then, and then you have long-term value in the 
second ability. All right, a braid is a closing on a free dollar uncommon. It's amazing. Uh, there's not much I need to say about this. When you have a whole artifact de set, Kaladas and um, you know Kaladas and Aether Revolt being based on artifacts, and you have artifact vehicles, and you might have pirate ships in the next set. Instant speed destroy target artifact is very relevant. The free damage to target creature is also relevant in case you can't hit an artifact. It's just good. Will it see modern playability? It might. One of the reasons it may is you look at that foil price. It's an interesting foil price. You typically don't see that high of a multiplier unless people are buying it from modern or eternal formats. I would be... This would be a great card for FNM promo if we were to have those. I think it was a wasted opportunity to really promote other good on commons. All right, now let's move on to the next card, which is a card that will rotate out. Why has this card spiked? Mainly because it's a 2-1 for 1 red. That's it. That's all they wanted. They want a 2 power for 1 red. It does have upside, but the upside is, I mean, it's relatively tame. It's not like that's what, why you're playing it. You're not playing it in a vampire deck. You're playing it in a mono red deck. Overall, it's not a bad card. Definitely something that I would say casually people are going to want it. Vampires are a very strong tribe in terms of people trading for just casual and bulk. Once all the vampires from Shadows over Innistrad and all the vampires from Eldritch Moon rotate out, I would go and buy them at bulk because they won't be bulk forever. That is one of the knowns in MTG Finance, is if you buy it into Tribal, it's not a bad buy. You will be fine. You will be taken well care you will be well taken care of in terms of the return on investment sometime in the future. Vampires are just one of those tribes that casual players love a ton. Now, this is the other one drop, which is a 1-2. It kind of reminds me of another 1-2, but it's not good in my opinion. If a source you control would deal non-combat damage to a player to a creature and opponent controls, put that many minus one minus one counters on that creature instead. Also, whenever you play an instant or a sorcery, it gets plus one plus one. It... Somehow this card began at $7, which doesn't seem correct to me, $7.50, and then it plummeted it down to bulk, and now it's going up. The power level of the current sets is such that a 1-2 with upside and a 2-1 with no upside, or very little upside, I should say, are the most dominant cards in Standard. Now, that's where we are currently. Mono Red is the deck to beat and these are the cards they're running with i think overall mid range is incredibly weak right now so mid range beats the aggro decks and then control beats the mid range and then aggro would beat the control here we just have we have no mid range so we can't get to control this is one of my favorite cards in magic duels rest in peace magic duels I always like playing this card. You drop your in turn one, you attack of one, you get a card, you attack again, you get another card, you play some removal on your opponent's creature, you get another card, and when you're out of your hand, you pay one, you discard you pay a red, you discard your hand, which at that point should be nothing, and you sacrifice it, and then you put all cards exiled from it into its owner's hand. So you can probably pick up if you're lucky and if you have burn spells and removal while attacking your opponent. You can probably pick up three to four cards when you're totally out. That is a intense investment, right? Because you dealt four damage, you dealt four damage, and you paid one in a red to draw four cards. Ideally. If your opponent doesn't realize what's happening, they gotta remove the card. They have to remove this before it gets too big uh, interestingly enough, they try to destroy it. You can, and you have uh, double red. You can actually play the red in response a second time. So as long as you have red open, you can get your cards. 
All right, moving on to last card, Earthshaker. This is again a amazing speculation. If you had picked this, props on you because I did not see anything in it. So it is a two-one haste, which is good enough. Uh, whenever it enters the battlefield, target creature with power less than or equal to its power cannot block. Externalize, and the externalize is oh, eternalize. Wow, I've been saying externalize this whole time. Huh. <laughs> yeah, all right, leave me a comment below about that. So it's Eternalize. I don't know why I kept saying Externalize. Anyway, Eternalize, you pay four double red. It is a 4-4 four, four with haste that can make pretty much anything on not block, which will let you to swing for lethal. Good card. Good card in the current meta. Like, the cards don't have to be amazing to be good and standard. They just have to be okay. And if this card is a slightly better than okay, then it will be a 4 or $5 card, which it is currently today. Anyway, that is it. Leave me a comment below. Bye, guys.